You guys wanted some personal collection videos, so I figured there's no better place to start than one of my most prized possessions in my whole collection. And as you've probably gathered by now, it is not a sealed or graded video game. You might be shocked to learn that it's not even a video game at all. What we are going to talk about today is my original World of Nintendo M36 Fiber Optic Sign. This is the type of sign that would have been purchased by licensed retailers back in the 80s and 90s and used for display or advertisement within their stores. Most commonly you can find signs and other advertisements like this if you search for old World of Nintendo store photos. The stores are always chock full of amazing display pieces just like this. And if you go down the rabbit hole into original Nintendo displays and advertisements, there are a lot of them. You can find fiber optic signs advertising Game Boy, Super Nintendo, N64, and even this M36 sign sign here has many different variants that are all slightly different from each other, including some that are made out of neon instead of being fiber optic. And I know we talk about sealed games so much now on this channel, but this sign falls into the other category that I love collecting for, which are those types of items that were never actually available for retail purchase. The only people that were allowed to buy these retail type items were licensed Nintendo retailers at the time. Then slowly after those life cycles ended, these signs and other display pieces would slowly leak out into the market. I'm pretty sure the official rules where you had to return these to Nintendo and or destroy them, much like current displays that you'll see inside of GameStop or Walmart, you're not actually supposed to get those. They're supposed to destroy them, which makes them really fun to collect because naturally they aren't made to purchase. You can't simply walk into a store and buy them, making them inherently rare, which is always fun. Now, before I plug this thing in and let you all witness the marvel that is 1991 fiber optic technology, I do just want to tell you a little bit of the specs because this thing is freaking huge. On the actual Nintendo catalog listing for this sign, it is 15 inches high, it is 36 inches across, and it is 8 inches deep. And this absolute monstrosity of a sign weighs in at 25 pounds on my own scale, which is a little bit weird because the catalog listing says it's supposed to weigh 27.8 pounds, but I'm sure that's just counting all the packing material. Hopefully mine isn't missing anything. So after giving you those numbers, I'm sure you're not shocked when I say that the the worst part of owning this World of Nintendo sign is any time you have to move it. It's not easy to get any kind of grip on this sign and pick it up. And then when you do have it in your hands, it's freaking heavy. What's even more funny about that is on the sign on the top here, there are these built-in hook pegs where you can actually hang chains from them. And the idea is that you would hang this sign from the ceiling for display. Now ask me if I'm ever going to be brave enough to hang this monstrosity from the ceiling. No <laughs> shot, bucko. No shot. But that's enough jibber jabber about the sign. I know you all only came for one thing and it's freaking disgusting. Let me kill the lights, create some atmosphere, and I'll show you guys what it looks like running as well as what it looks like inside which is pretty cool as well. I don't know if a lot of you have ever seen fiber optic technology on the inside. I'm a 90s kid. The only exposure I ever had to fiber optic technology was we had this little lamp that was, it just had a bunch of fiber optic coils basically coming off of it and they all lit up at the end. That is the only piece of fiber optic technology I had my whole life. So this sign's just cool because it's fiber optic because nothing is fiber optic. Anyways, use this slight interlude to hit the like button at the bottom of the video, help it to spread to more people. And as always, thank you to every single Patreon who helps support the channel as well as the YouTube members. I really can't do it without you guys. I'm shooting this in the middle of the day and uh, it actually didn't get that dark in my kitchen, which I, I should, probably should have seen this coming. But let me just take the cable here, plug it in. Three, two, one. So here it is in all of its glory. World of Nintendo M36 fiber optic sign. And I'm just gonna put the mic in front of it here because it's actually pretty loud when it runs. This thing actually produces quite the hum and it actually looks pretty darn good even though it's not that dark in here. A true testament to the workmanship of 1991. So what I am gonna do here quick though is take off the top panel so that we can take a look inside while it's running because that's also pretty cool.
Now I've just got to swap the phone cam here so you guys can see what the heck is going on. There is the inside of the sign. You can see every one of these strands plugs into a separate spot on the board that you see make all of the cool light effects. I don't actually know how fiber optic works. You can see there's a big spinning disc there. One big light is providing stuff to the disc. I assume that disc has the data that tells everything to make the pattern, but the actual technology of what's going on is just simply above me. If any of you guys are big fiber optic heads down in the chat, please let me know. I'd love to hear about it. And here is the 360 of the sign coming back to the front. Now, like I said, every one of those little prongs here now that you saw on the back of it is one of these lights. Pretty freaking crazy, honestly. I was actually going to keep recording with the sign running, but the hum it gives off is genuinely loud. So I had to turn it off. I did realize though that I forgot to mention, when did I buy this sign? How much did it cost and what might it be worth now? I was actually super fortunate to get this sign back in 2014 locally. And I don't live in a big city here. I'm in the province of Saskatchewan up in Canada. So when one did pop up locally, I was basically willing to pay whatever it took to get it. Which thankfully back in 2014, all it cost me was 400 Canada dollars as well as I had to trade a Rescue Rangers 2 NES card which at the time was probably somewhere in the 150 to 200 Canadian range. Rescue Rangers 2 has always been expensive. Obviously I'm thrilled with the purchase and in the long run it has really worked out for me. I actually don't know the last time I've seen one of these fiber optic signs sell publicly. I don't follow the market too closely because I'm not really trying to add more signs to my collection. I already don't have space for the one I do own. My best guess for its current market value would be somewhere around five thousand us dollars but please if you do know more about this if you do follow the market i would love to hear your opinion about that down below and the last thing that i do want to mention here is that if you are interested in these display pieces if you want to just learn more see what's out there i was able to find an amazing saved web page from nintendo age from all the way back in 2008 by bunny boy which lists so many of the different nes and super nintendo era advertising pieces as well as their product codes and in a lot of cases even links to photos it's an amazing resource. I've linked it in the description if you want to check it out. It's honestly just fun to go through and click on images and see a lot of these old vintage display pieces. But that will do it for today's video. Like and subscribe. There are going to be more personal collection videos coming in the future. I hope you all enjoyed this one and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.